Hello everyone, welcome to the City of Jamestown's Business Reopening Webinar Phase 1, hosted by the Department of Development. My name is Seth Piccirillo on behalf of the Department of Development, and our email address is dod at jamestowny.gov. As always, we want to thank our partners, the Chautauqua County Industrial Development Agency, the Chautauqua County Chamber of Commerce, the Jamestown Small Business Development Center, and the Builders Exchange of the Southern Tier. We're excited that phase one uh, of the economy has been reopened by New York State. So now what? Uh, there's been many questions that have been created by phase one reopening, and the purpose of today's webinar is to assist phase one businesses with the details of the safe and efficient reopening of their business. We do have some clear next steps from the state's guidance. Number one is to complete your business safety plan, which we'll discuss in great detail. Number two, to affirm your business's compliance with the New York forward reopening guidelines, which we'll also discuss. Number three and number four, make that business safety plan and affirmation successful. You need to review that plan with your employees so that they know that their employer is taking every precaution possible to keep them safe. Also, you need to make that plan accessible to your customers and the public. Um, that's a state guideline, but also in order for customers to feel comfortable using your services again, they're also going to want to make sure that you're taking every safety precaution necessary. There's going to be gray areas, questions, and confusion along the way, but we do have two clear things that we need to do uh, as soon as possible complete the business safety plan and the affirmation and send that to New York State. Now, usually in a PowerPoint, you don't wanna just read text, but in this situation, the text is critically important. So we're gonna go over all the details that are involved with completing your business safety plan. Forward.ny.gov is the best resource of what you need to do and the guidance that you need to review. It includes industry-specific guidance as well as general safety protocols. It includes a business safety plan template and the affirmation link, which the template is a, is a writable PDF, which is easy to use. And the affirmation is something that must be completed through the website. The guidance is broken down into summary guidance, uh, more detailed guidelines per industry, and then the aforementioned business safety plan template. In addition to meeting state guidelines, these steps are about creating employee trust and customer confidence. Those two things are needed for a successful reopening of the economy. Again, employees need to know that their employer is keeping them safe, and customers need to know that it's as safe as possible to patronize their business. We're going to go over what phase one means as far as which businesses are covered. That's construction, agriculture, forestry, fishing, and hunting, retail that is limited to curbside or in store pickup or drop off manufacturing, and wholesale trade. Today's webinar is focused on construction, so let's go over what that means. Building equipment, building finishing, foundation structure and building exterior, highway street and bridge construction, land subdivision, non-residential and residential building construction, and utility system construction. Manufacturing is a long list. It includes apparel, computer and electronics, electrical lighting, fabricated metal, furniture and related products, leather and allied products, machinery manufacturing, non-metallic mineral production, paper manufacturing, petroleum and coal, plastics and rubber, printing and related support activities, textile mills and textile mill products, wood product manufacturing, and other municipal manufacturing. Phase one agriculture, forestry, and fishing and hunting includes animal and crop production, activities to support animal and crop production, and activities to support forestry. Phase one retail includes that delivery curbside or in-store pickup of clothing and direct selling, electronics and appliances, electronic shopping and mail orders, uh, furniture and home furnishings, florists, and general merchandising stores. It goes on for health and personal care, jewelry, luggage, and leather goods, lawn and garden equipment and supplies, office supplies, stationery, and gifts, 
used merchandise stores, shoe stores, sporting goods, hobby, musical and instrumental and bookstores, and other minis, uh, miscellaneous store retailers. Phase two, which is not currently open yet, but we expect a, at least a two week time period between phase one and phase two, is professional services, retail, administrative support, real estate and rental leasing. Phase three is restaurant and food services uh, beyond just curbside pickup. And phase four is arts, entertainment, recreation, and education for all of you parents that are currently trying to work remotely. The reopening guidelines apply to both essential businesses that have been open in some capacity or full capacity uh, since this all started or businesses that were closed. It's guidance that must be followed uh, by all businesses. If you're in construction and manufacturing, you will likely have safety protocols that are in addition to the type of guidance that is being given by the state. That is okay, but it is critically important that you meet the specific safety guidance uh, that the state is putting out first. If you go to the Forward NOI website, this is what uh, the guidance looks like. You have mandatory, which I'm gonna go over in detail, and also recommended best practices. We're gonna go over what physical distancing means. Ensure six feet of distance between personal, personnel unless safety or core function of work requires uh, a less, less space between employees. For any work occurring indoors, limit workforce presence to no more than one worker per 250 square feet on site, excluding supervisors in this calculation, unless additional personal protective measures are implemented. Face coverings would be an example of that. Reduce bi-directional foot traffic by posting signs with arrows in narrow aisles, hallways, or spaces. Tightly confined spaces like elevators or hoists should be occupied by only one individual at a time, unless all occupants are wearing face coverings. If occupied by more than one person, keep occupancy under 50% of maximum capacity. Have employees work from home whenever possible, which is obviously difficult in the construction sector. Post social distancing markers using tape or signs that denote six feet of space in commonly used or other applicable areas on site. That could be the clock in stations or health screening stations as an example. Prohibit non-essential visitors on the site. Limit in-person gatherings as much as possible and use tele or video conferencing whenever possible. Essential in-person gatherings like meetings should be held in the open, well-ventilated spaces, with appropriate social distancing amongst participants. Establish designated areas for pickups and deliveries, limiting contact to the extent possible. Employers must provide employees with accessible face coverings at no cost to the employee, uh, and then adequately supply of coverings in the case of a replacement. Acceptable face coverings include, but are not limited to, uh, homemade, quick cut, or bandanas. Surgical masks, unless the nature of the work requires stricter PPE. Uh, the most common example that we're seeing are face shields or N95 respirators at this time. Face coverings must be cleaned or replaced after use when damaged or soiled. It must not be shared and should be properly stored or discarded. Limit of sharing of objects like tools, and machinery, and materials, and vehicles, which is very much applicable to the construction industry and discourage touching of shared surfaces or when in contact with shared objects or frequently touched areas, wear gloves, trade appropriate or medical, or sanitize and wash hands before and after contact. Adhere to hygiene and sanitation requirements that are outlined by Department of Health and CDC, and maintain cleaning logs on site that document date, time, and scope of cleaning. Whenever possible, increase ventilation of outdoor air, that could be as simple as opening windows or doors while maintaining safety precautions. Provide and maintain hygiene stations for, personal, for personnel, including hand washing with soap, water, and paper towels, as well as an alcohol-based hand sanitizer containing 60% or more alcohol for areas where hand washing is not feasible. Encourage employees to bring lunch from home and to reserve adequate space so that they can eat their meals, trying to keep that six feet of distance. 
provide and encourage employees to use cleaning and disinfecting supplies before and after use of shared frequently touched surfaces followed by hand, uh, hand hygiene. Tools would be a good example of that. Conduct regular cleaning and disinfection at least every day and more frequent cleaning and disinfection of shared objects like tools and surfaces, as well as high transit areas such as restrooms and common areas. Cleaning and disinfecting on the site, shared services and other areas, as well as equipment and tools should be performed using DEC products identified by the EPA as effective against COVID-19. If cleaning and disinfection products or the act of cleaning and disinfection causes safety, safety hazards, uh, personnel should have access to hand hygiene stations between use and to be supplied with disposable gloves. And the sharing of food and beverages like, unfortunately, things like buffet style meals or pizza should be prohibited. Communication is key in every strategy that, that has to do with COVID-19 in the workplace. A firm you have received and understand the state issued industry guidelines, which we'll talk about shortly. Post signage throughout the site to remind personnel to adhere to proper hygiene, social distancing rules, appropriate use of PPE, and cleaning and disinfecting protocols. Train all personnel on new protocols and frequently communicate safety guidelines. Establish a communication plan for employees, visitors, and clients with a consistent means to provide updated information. Maintain a continuous log of every person, including workers and visitors, who may have close contact with other individuals at the site or the area, excluding deliveries that are performed with appropriate PPE or through contactless means. If a worker tests positive for COVID-19, the employer must immediately notify state and local, local health organizations, cooperate with contract tracing efforts, including notification of potential contacts, such as workers or visitors, visitors who had close contact with the individual, while maintaining confidentiality required by state and federal uh, regulations. And the last one here, which I bolded, conspicuously post completed safety plans on site. For screening, employees who are sick should stay home or return home if they become ill at work. Perform screenings, re screenings remotely by telephone or electronic survey before reporting to the site to the extent possible. And implement mandatory health screening assessments, which could be a questionnaire that could be done at home or a temperature check on site. Before employees begin work each day and for essential visitors asking about, number one, COVID-19 symptoms in the past 14 days. Number two, positive COVID-19 tests in the past 14 days. And or three, close contact with a confirmed or suspected COVID-19 case in the past 14 days. Assessment responses should be reviewed every day and should be documented. If tested positive, employees may only return completing a 14-day quarantine. Employees who present with no symptoms but have tested positive in the past 14 days may only return to work after completing a 14-day quarantine. Employees who have close contact with a confirmed or suspected person with COVID-19, but are not experiencing any symptoms should inform their employer and may be, able, may be able to work with additional precautions, including regular monitoring for symptoms and temperature, requiring face coverings at all times, and appropriate social distancing from others. On-site screeners should be trained by the employer with uh, identified individuals familiar with CDC and Department of Health guidelines where appropriate PPE, including at a minimum a face covering. There should also be a plan for cleaning, disinfection, and contract tracing in the event of a positive case. So when you go onto the website, all of the many points that I just read are in this interim guidance for construction activities or whatever your applicable sector is. What the state needs you to do is make sure that you understand all of these guidelines and have a plan to address them and to affirm that you're going to do that. On the website, on the bottom of that page, you will see a link that is going to take you to the affirmation section. I have some screenshots of what that looks like. It is a, a simple form that talks about what industry you're in, the business name, your name, your address, your email address, and then finally you submit that affirmation. The affirmations are currently being tracked by New York State, 
the business plan that we're going to be discussing in a moment is not actually submitted to the state, but it is critical that you have it on site for review. This is the NY Forward Safety Plan template. It is broken down in the same way that the guidelines that I just reviewed are. Here's a screenshot of what it looks like. It's looking for you in either text or checkbox to talk about your plans for social distancing, hygiene, screening. Um, it is not a long form, and it is something that can be completed within a day and should be completed as soon as possible. As I said, that business safety plan is not directly submitted to the state. Uh, the affirmation is that you do by that link. Um, that business safety plan could be reviewed by the state if there was a visit to your business or moving forward. But as of right now, the affirmation goes to New York State. You keep the business safety plan. So our next steps as employers are complete your business safety plan. File a readily accessible copy of that plan in your business. If you're a construction company, have those copies of those plans in your vehicle so that they can be uh, accessible on individual job sites. Post a public copy of the plan within your place of business. Schedule meetings to discuss the plan with your employees. It's very important that they know what precautions you're taking. They won't be able to follow those precautions if they don't know about them. These aren't requirements, but they are suggestions. There's going to be more COVID-19 uh, related guidance and information we're assuming moving forward. To have one single person on your staff be responsible for to be that point of contact, especially when it comes to safety protocols, would be an efficient use of time. Keep communicating with your employees. Can't stress that enough. Even if you can't have traditional meetings, if you can set up a situation where you can text them, contact them by phone, use a web hosted meetings when possible. Communication is the best way to make sure that this plan is understood. You could be looking at the guidance and realize that your specific business or your industry needs additional safety protocols. That's a, more safety and more protocols are, are always a good idea. Just understand that the New York State specific guidance that we went over that needs to be followed uh, first. We want to thank our local partners again, the Chautauqua County Industrial Development Agency, the Chautauqua County Chamber of Commerce, Jamestown Small Business Development Center, and the Builders Exchange of the Southern Tier. Uh, the City of Jamestown uh, Department of Development is more than happy to walk you through these forms and these processes. Uh, the email address is listed right here on the slide and we hope that you'll contact us and we'll continue these conversations to help other phases of businesses uh, create a effective plan uh, in response to COVID-19. Thank you everyone.